Just one hand at a time. Arthur, you're always a scout. <laughs> All right, so how many do I have? Five? If not, we have to go to the store. Is there five? Four? Okay, even better. All righty. Welcome to City Hall. We will officially start our meeting now with the roll call led by our clerk. Branch. Here. Bray. Here. Carol. Here. Graham. Present. Henry. Here. Hussey. Here. Mihalovich. Here. Prather. Here. Schulte. Here. Scrivener. Here. All right, we do have a quorum this evening. Uh, first of all, let's have our scouts get up, if you would, please. Uh, Arthur, I'm going to trust you with the microphone again. Can you turn that on? We'll have to get Mar Arthur on the payroll here for long. Is it on? <laughs> here comes one. Test one, two. All right, there you go. What's your name, young man? I am Alec Land. I am from Troop 333. I am, um, my rank is first class, and I am senior patrol leader. Cool. My name is Matthew Hart. I'm from Troop 333. I am a first class scout and the assistant senior patrol leader. All right. My name is Dylan Nelson. I am from Troop 333, and I am a first class scout. My name is Joe Nathan Gant. I am from Troop 333, and I am a second-class scout. Hey, guys, what uh, troop are you from again? 333. 333? Yes. Okay. It's kind of a lucky number to some. Uh, if you could come forward, please, I have a presentation from the city to give you. We appreciate you guys taking time out of a school night to come here to City Hall, and uh, we would hope someday each and every one of you would be up here where we're at. Because by then we'll be pretty old. <laughs> At least some of us will be. Come on up, guys. Okay, next we have uh, underneath uh, number seven, no public hearings tonight. We have uh, minutes and reports filed here at City Hall uh, due to our boards and commissions. If you'd like to be a part of one of those, you can contact Gail Strope uh, or on our website at jeffsimmo.org. Next, we're going into uh, council committee reports. First of all, we have the admin committee chaired by Councilwoman Carrie Carroll. Thank you. We have canceled the administration committee meeting for next week, so we will not be having a September meeting. Our next meeting will be October 2nd at 8 a.m. across the hall. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, moving on, uh, finance committee. Uh, been kind of busy lately. Uh, chaired by Sean Schulte. Sean. Actually, the finance committee did not meet during the month of August. Uh, our next meeting is September 24th on a Tuesday, 7.30 a.m. across the hall. However, as you mentioned, the budget committee has been very busy, and um, we intend to pull the budget off the informal calendar night tonight for a vote. So thank you. All right. Sean, I want to tell you this as a uh, first year as a finance chair. I think you've done an outstanding job. I know it's been a difficult year, and we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, public Safety Committee, uh, Mr. Rick Prather. Uh, the last Public Safety meeting was uh, canceled, and our next meeting will be uh, Thursday, October 3rd, after the Brown Bay across the hall. Thank you, Rick. Uh, next, Public Works and Planning, Mr. Scribner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Public Works and Planning Committee met on Thursday, August the 22nd. Um, we uh, renewed a lease.
piece with the Jefferson City uh, Hangar Association. Um, we have several items that, of new business that are on tonight's uh, agenda. Uh, Capital Mall Development Agreement uh, for G CID and Future Subdivision, the Stone Ridge uh, Village TDD Expansion, uh, Cole County Juvenile Officer Parking. Uh, we have uh, a Frog Hollow Road Project Update uh, discussion from Matt Barash. And as soon as this changes where I can see the second page. <laughs> Um, we had a, a discussion about Old Town incentive programs from uh, Janice McMillan and an uh, update on uh, CDBG policy and, and some other issues. So there'll be, there'll be several things on the agenda tonight, the council meeting to uh, work on. And right. our next meeting is uh, Thursday, September the 19th, uh, across the hall at 7.30 a.m. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on, uh, we have a liaison report tonight from Cultural Arts, and that's Mr. Rick Mahalovich. Rick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had uh, met on August the 28th, and uh, the main projects that were discussed was the art mural that's going to be bid out for uh, on Highway 50, uh, and a launch of a roundabout art that will occur down uh, on uh, Stadium. And then uh, there's two up upcoming events. September 7th is a street art fair and jazz fest. Uh, and on September 13th, there's a sip and sit. It's a wine tasting paired with gourmet desserts and coffee and tea, and I have tickets. <laughs> Our next meeting will be September 25th. All right, thank you, Rick. Any other uh, liaison reports this evening? Mr. C um, Mr. Henry. Actually, I will do one for uh, historic preservation. Uh, they actually met, uh, ha actually had an emergency meeting last week, which was when we, last Monday when we had our uh, our budget meeting, so they were kind of going simultaneously. Um, that point of discussion was actually the, uh, the uh, deterioration of uh, the prison site um, and what to, you know, kind of what uh, action to take with that. Um, so that's kind of where historic preservation is at this point. And then also uh, the date for the next meeting is tentative at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, presentations, uh, no appointments uh, tonight uh, from the mayor. Carrie, I'm sorry. I wanted to make a quick comment on those two liaison reports. I noticed we did miss that meeting since we had the budget meeting, but the um, MSP is such a big topic. I would love if they do plan another meeting about it. Hopefully we can get it to where the council could attend. I bet we would all love to hear an update on kind of what action they're going to take because they're a, a commission. Hopefully they can get something to the council where we could get something on to maybe uh, uh, somebody who could, could listen to what this commission is doing. I think that's super. And I wanted to mention on Councilman Mahalovich that the Arts Commission, they raise so much of their own funds. I think probably more than any commission I've seen. So for only $10, it's very reasonable. So I would really encourage the public and the council because that money goes directly in to fund our public art and they do a fantastic job raising their own money. So thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carrie. Uh, no appointments tonight by the mayor. Moving on to number 10, uh, Mr. Hank Stratman, East Side. Welcome, Hank. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council members, for the opportunity to address and represent the Eastside Business Association. Uh, I want to bring to your attention an initiative that uh, we have coordinated with the Public Works Director and, and uh, Planning Committee. Uh, we have decided to adopt the uh, area of the road there by, between East High and East McCarty Street, uh, vicinity of my property, Warwick Village, former Warwick Village, now, now the Village Square. Um, originally, the, uh, in 1976, a little history, a, the East End Betterment Association, uh, Mrs. Landwehr, John's mother, uh, Mrs. Owens, and Mr. and Mrs. Owens, and, uh, and Mr. and Mrs. Weaver uh, were in charge of that Betterment Association. They put a, a 1976 Bicentennial Veterans Monument right at the very tip of that intersection. Flagpole, nice light, a nice tree behind it. And uh, most of us don't even know it's there. We don't notice it. We, and uh, it, it kind of goes unrecognized. So the East End has decided that they would like to adopt that spot, enhance the Veterans Monument, and enhance the care and maintenance of that site to make it very uh, representative of their organization and make it suitable for the public. The lower illustration here kind of shows you what the final product will look like. We are going to move the, put a, we have a nice eagle, about four foot tall eagle, we're going to put on top of a pedestal raised flower beds, and then a nice sign that kind of 
uh, declares it a veterans tribute and thanks to all veterans, past, present, and future, for their service to our nation. And we like to call this part, we're kind of calling this area Freedom's Corner. We thought that was the appropriate name. It kind of says it all. And it'll be a kind of a drive, I call it a drive by monument. Because it's not one of those where you park and get out and walk, because there's really not much parking there and there's a lot of traffic. But it's a drive by monument to remind people of the uh, service and sacrifice of the veterans. Next slide, please. This will be probably close to the final version of the sign. It'll be in granite, engraved, and uh, Midwest Block and Brick has donated all the, the block work and the stone work that's going on. And we'll talk more about uh, donors here in the next slide. Uh, we're gonna have a small fundraising initiative because uh, we, we we're gonna sell papers much like they did at Munichburg, much like this done at uh, several other places in town. Uh, Mainly it's going to be sponsored by small businesses, and some businesses are smaller than other businesses, so we'll kind of come up with $100 for the individual, 500 for very small businesses, and 1,000 papers where you can actually put on your business logo as you contribute to this effort. So that's just kind of a quick layout of, how, of what our plans are to fund it. Next slide. Uh, okay, now, when we first started this, East Side said, well, uh, and we brought it up at a, conference, at a committee meeting, and they said, well, what's it going to cost? I said, I don't know. Let me go check with some of my key contributors and donors. I went to these po folks, and not a one of them said no. They've all said, whatever we can do to help. Uh, all these are pledges of support, and so I think we probably have close to 75% of the cost of the upgrades to this uh, little monumental tri veterans tribute already uh, in the book. And we just need another about eight, probably eight to ten thousand to kind of finish it out and, and sustain it over time. I'll just let you go. So, so we're off and running. Now, our goal is to have this monument dedicated on November or the 11th, Veterans Day. That's only two months away. And uh, I'm the general contractor and fundraiser and coordinator of this project. So it, it will be ready on November the 11th. Uh, I think that may be my last slide. What are your questions? Oh, way ahead timelines, as you can see there. What, what are your questions? And again, thank you for supporting this. And oh, yes, Larry, yeah, Mr. Henry. I didn't necessarily have a, a question, Hank, but I just wanted to commend you on your work that you've done, um, all the work that you've put in over there and with the renovations and everything that you've done to build that area back up. Um, I, you've done a tremendous job, and we, we appreciate you and, and uh, and, and like the, and, and, and love and enjoy that you're a part of the community. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for those kind comments. Gary. And I completely agree. I know that place was falling down before uh, Warwick Village was, before you and Linda basically built it back almost with your own bare hands and, and a lot of vision for that area. So this is going to be a fantastic cornerstone. My question is if you want to purchase, let's say, a brick paver or be a sponsor of some kind, do they call you, or what number do they okay. call in order to participate? Good, good question. Uh, we're putting a, a communique for helping us put together a real nice professional fundraising brochure, and on there will be the three options. It, I think we're going to have it on the East End Business Association's website where you can just log on and pull it up, copy it, and send in your, you make your decision on how you want to go, whether it's a business or as an individual, to commemorate one of your veterans or family members. Um, so I'll have that ready by uh, this Friday. And we'll have it on the air, so uh, we'll we'll make sure you know how to. Can Great. Participate. And for now, they do the East Side Business Association website uh, soon. If they just tune into that, they'll have that information. That's there. correct. Thank good, you. Good question. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Hank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have on our agenda tonight, uh, Mr. Dan Westhues with Central Bank, and our very own Captain Doug Shoemaker of our Jefferson City Police Department. I'm assuming you brought him to. Cuff him in front of all of us. How are we going to? I'm not going through that again. <laughs> <laughs> not in public. Uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes. I know that uh, it, it's, a, it's a privilege, and so I'll be very short. Uh, we've just kicked off the United Way campaign again uh, every year. We're a cyclical business, and uh, we kicked it off on Thursday. And it's time to talk about workplace campaigns. Um, I'm the board chair this year uh, for United Way. I've lived back in Jefferson City for 17 years, and of those 17 years, I've been I've volunteered for United Way all 17 years, and so I've pretty much done every job there is to do uh, with that agency. 
Uh, through that time, I've learned basically three things, guys. Uh, one of them is that the 24 agencies that we have that are serving Jefferson City and the United Way are doing really, really great work here in Jefferson City, and, uh, and they are making a difference in, in a lot of people's lives, quite a few lives, more than you would think. Uh, number two, the process that our United Way has uh, to make sure that those funds are being used appropriately and that they're getting to the right people uh, is, is very good. I've sat on funds distribution my entire uh, volunteerism time with United Way, and uh, it is, if it's the best way to understand that dollars are going to the right place. You know, as, I think you've heard this number before, but we have less than 10% than uh, administration cost for our United Way, which is one of the lowest in the country, actually, for our size of United Way. We have a $1.7 million campaign. Most, most, agents, most United Way agencies run between uh, 20 and 30%, and we run under 10%, so we're a very well-managed organization. And the third thing that I've learned with my time at the United Way is, guys, the need is always there in Jefferson City. And although it's not always in front of everyone, uh, we have a lot of poverty. And we have a lot of people that don't have a place to live. We have a lot of people that go homeless. And we have a lot of people, a lot of kids that are, have bad influencers out there in front of them. And all of our United Way agencies are helping fix that problem. It's time, though, for the United Way uh, workplace kickoff, which is really why I'm here. And as I think most of you know, I work for Central Bank, and we obviously run a very strong uh, workplace campaign that I've always been proud of. But I've learned something there, too. Uh, it is very important, obviously, for us to get our executives to, to donate the, uh, because that's where some of the, the larger dollars come in. Keep in mind, workplace campaigns are the, um, the lifeblood of United Way. It's one of the only agencies that really get out there and, and businesses allow us in. So we need those kind of people. But here's what I found interesting about Central Bank. Um, as a percentage of people that are giving, my entry-level employees are the, the biggest pool of employees that are giving. Okay? And I'll tell you why. I've been studying this for quite a while. I have employees that have been uh, served by Rape and Abuse Crisis Center. I have employees that kids are coming home with the buddy packs in the weekends. I have employees that are on scholarship through United Way funds sending their kids through Special Learning Center. Uh, we have 670 employees sitting here in Jefferson City, and you'd be surprised the amount of people that are being served by United Way agencies that are working for Central Bank, uh, but that are still making minimum, close to minimum wage. And so I tell you that story because these are the people that end up giving back through the workplace campaign because they see what the United Way is doing for them. And it's a way for people uh, to be philanthropic without having to give a lot of money. They can still give a little bit. So I thank the city for going through a workplace campaign and and uh, I thank you for the volunteers and that you guys give us particularly with Captain Shoemaker here and I'm going to turn it over to him to talk about your campaign any questions no, I'm just kidding uh, first of all thanks for having us we, we do appreciate it I'm, I'm here kind of under a different role usually I'm in a uniform and talking about something police rated but tonight it's a little bit different and this year I was asked to be on the campaign uh, leadership team to help assist with different uh, roles throughout the community and, and try and get even more involved and as you know uh, this year our goal is 1.7 million dollars for the United Way and the pace setters alone have already raised almost half of that in eight hundred thousand dollars so we're well on our way it's a big goal it sounds like a lot of money but I'm sure we'll make it uh, so we're very excited about it as a member of city government after almost 21 years in this job um, I get excited about what we do as city officials and as, as members of, of, of our staff because I always want us to do better and want us to do more and I think we're certainly capable of that um, I will say that not being from Jefferson City, I have found this, however, to be a very generous community. No matter what seems to come up, people tend to find a cause and then they give to it and they really uh, put everything into it that they possibly can. And the United Way, with over, well, with 24 member agencies, uh, has served over 8,800 people in 2012 alone. Uh, that's a lot of people within our Jefferson City, Mid-Missouri community. So when Dan talks about people being served, certainly it's very applicable to what we do. Uh, as a police officer, and I think I speak for members of our fire department too, we see firsthand some of the effects of things that happen, whether it's the rape and abuse crisis center, the victims that have no place to go, but Iraq serves them, whether it's the Red Cross that shows up after a fire and gives people lodging when their house is just burnt down, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, which is an excellent organization, uh, and so on and so forth. All of the 24 member agencies have a lot to do with people within our community things, services that they normally cannot at all afford, and that's where the United Way comes in. Um, what I'm asking is for a greater commitment from our, uh, from our city government and from our employees. I know it's difficult. Uh, you're going to talk about budget later. We all get that. We all understand it. That makes the need for the community even greater because they're not, uh, they're not getting any more money either. But what I would like to say is within the next few weeks or next week or so, I'm going to meet with all the department heads and talk about individual um, 
campaign goals, talk about how we can, prov how we can uh, move forward and do some great things this year. And I'm really excited about it. It's an honor and a privilege. Uh, Anne couldn't be here tonight. She's busy with the Scholastic thing, so Dan was kind enough to come. And uh, we really want to get this thing going this year and do some great things. So thanks for having us, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any uh, questions for our guest tonight from the United Way? Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Appreciate what you do in, so our, in the community. Uh, next, we have on the agenda an addition of Captain Tim Young of our world-famous Jefferson City Fire Service. Tim? Good evening. Do I need to give my name? No, but I also s I understand you have another uh, partner with you. Right. Captain Steve Holtmeyer is with me. Is he Steve coming up too, or are you going to do this on your own? I'm going to do this on my own. Okay. I just want to uh, make sure that everyone knew he was in the crowd. Right. And I want to recognize Steve as our chairperson for our museum project. And um, speaking of the museum, it, it, we've got two things we want to talk to you about. Just a brief update on the museum project. Uh, we've been able to, since January, do a number of projects down at that building on, on Miller Street um, to the point now it's becoming an empty shell and it's ready for some real restoration. Uh, we have people on the fire department that are helping us with several projects. One of our members is rerunning a water line for us. Another one of our members, uh, once we have roofing supplied by weather crafter across the river, he's going to put the roof on. So we have that talent within the fire department of members off duty that are helping with that project. We've come up for a way, or, or with a way to help fund some of our projects. Um, as many of you know, I've been working on our history for about six years. Well, the book that I've been working on is now finished, and I would like to challenge each member of the city council and the mayor to buy a copy of our book. Um, to date, we've sold 125 books, and um, we're working toward a goal of 250. So we're, we're halfway there. And if we can do that in the next three weeks, then I can go to the publisher with a good order and we'll have money then to benefit our fire museum. Uh, we're going to order a few extras on the other side of this to have some to sell and that will be clear profit for our museum. And then as we do additional runs later on, as we get more demand for it, um, we'll have more, more to sell that way also. Um, can I give each member a brochure tonight or would you rather pick that up later? You can give them out right now if you'd like. Okay. I got mine before the meeting. I think a couple other people do too. But, Tim, really want to thank you for this. Uh, there's tremendous support uh, uh, for the museum. I know that within the community that the people have talked about. So, Well, with that said, I'd also like to encourage members of the, of the gallery tonight, as well as all the department heads. This book not only deals with the fire department, it deals with the history of the city, how the city has grown. It talks about some of the buildings, subdivisions, neighborhoods, how they grew and how they came to be. There's a lot of names of people that settled this city in this book. We've had a lot of people that settled the city that have been involved with the fire department over the years. So as you read through this, you're gonna see a lot of history and a lot of names of people that you recognize. Um, last names, and all the way back to, to 1821 and beginning of the city to present day. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, thank you, Tim. I think um, Interim Captain um, Turner has something to say also. Excuse me, Interim Chief, my bad. Mr. Mayor, Council, I just want to reiterate what uh, Captain Young said, the uh, hard work that these guys have put in uh, off-duty in uh, doing the work down at the museum. They've put in a, a countless time uh, there, uh, guys off-duty coming in and making sure that they uh, uh, that also wanted to recognize that the uh, union president is here, uh, Scott Spencer, one of the captains on sea shift, and they, he's also contributed quite a bit. So I, I want to tell them uh, personally how much I appreciate it. I get goes for all of us. Thanks, guys, for what you're doing out there. Uh, next, I have a quick uh, update. I want to bring up uh, Drew right quick on uh, Thursday night. Can you tell us a little bit what's going to happen uh, with our facilitator, Mr. Johnson, and our conference center? Please? Sure. Appreciate it. 
Uh, Thursday night we have scheduled at 5:30 uh, an open and closed session. Uh, the open session will be uh, for the facilitator to provide in details on and hand out the uh, market study, uh, which is I guess the one missing piece left before we can uh, finally make a decision. Uh, so we hope to have him do that, and the council can ask any questions it, it may have. Uh, the closed session would then relate to any other questions that the council might have at at this time. Uh, there's a hope then that once this goes through, uh, the market study will be provided to the developers and uh, with an eye to a decision, a final kind of uh, project or final proposal by the end of uh, September and the council can make a decision in October. But again, we don't want to hammer it down and suggest that is the final decision because things can happen, more time may be needed. But uh, hopefully we're nearing the end of the road one way or the other, I suppose. Okay. Drew, thanks for that update. We appreciate it. Yes, sir, Mr. Carlos. Uh, Drew, I guess my question is, uh, once this market study goes back to the developers, so the developers have a chance to redo their proposal, or when you say go back to the developer, well, the, it just does what? The question that came up in the discussions between the facilitator and the developer were that the uh, uh, our previous market studies, although not that old in you know human history, a couple of years, but in the in the market for uh, hotels and conferences it was a world ago because so many things have changed since 2008 and 2009 came through um, so the question often comes up is will there need to be a subsidy number one and number two is how big uh, can the market here support how big a facility can the market support uh, it's, it's no secret to anyone the proposals were considerably smaller than the council hoped to get initially but i think the market study is we, we hope to address is what what is the right size given the, the realities that we're in now and uh, can we close the gap so there is no subsidy or, or what w would it be and the council have to you know make that call a at that point so uh, I think they won't be redoing their whole bid but they'll have better information to either close the gap make the make their proposal a bit bigger in terms of conference size or, or not and then the council will be in the position to say we've got all the information we need to to, to make a decision did it answer your question, Mr. Graham? Okay. Anyone else? Okay, moving on. Thank you very much, uh, Drew, for that update. Uh, nothing under number 11, unless the council would have particular announcements of anything coming up they'd want to mention. Carlos? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to recognize a Lincoln University graduating student in the audience today. Uh, his name is Mr. Michael Watson. Uh, Mr. Watson is a graduating senior, like I said, majoring in political science. So. He wanted to come out tonight to see how council meetings are actually ran, so I wanted to certainly recognize him, and um, hopefully we see him in the near future somewhere. There you go. Mike, welcome. Thanks, guy. Okay, uh, next we have uh, number 12. No one signed up there, correct, clerk? Uh, 13. At this point in time, we'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda A through D. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, we'll move into first reading of Bill 2013 65. An ordinance amending the code of the city of Jefferson, Missouri by amending the traffic schedules. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this bill would add a reserve space on Monroe Street for a juvenile officer. I believe about uh, uh, a year ago, a, two spaces were added for that and uh, should have been three. So this corrects that and changes that. Okay. Any questions by council? All right. Next, we'll have a uh, first reading of 2013-66. An ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a development agreement with Capital Mall JC LLC. Matt. I'm sorry, Janice. My bad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this bill would authorize the city to sign a development agreement with the owners of Capital Mall. New owners are proposing to um, implement several economic development tools that will help to redevelopment, re redevelopment, redevelop, update, and improve the mall. Uh, one of the tools being proposed at this time is creation of a community improvement district that involves transferring of uh, parcels to wholly owned subsidiaries. Um, ordinarily, we would want to see a subdivision plat for these parcels. What this 
development agreement does is authorize this interim step of transferring these parcels with the follow-up of a subdivision plat at a later date. Any questions of staff? Okay, we'll have first reading of uh, 2013 67. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Cole County to cost share for the Morris Development Project. Mr. Prather, I see you here as the sponsor. I understand that there could be a uh, motion to suspend the rules tonight and have a third reading now. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to do so. Okay. Um, voice vote, Drew? Yep. yep. Okay. Anyone opposed to that? Well, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. If two people voice their opposition, and then, then you have to have seven people. Right. Okay. Is there <laughs> anyone that's opposed to that? Seeing none, we'll move on to round three of 2013 67, third reading, please. An ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Cole County to cost share for the Morris Development Project. Drew. Thank you. This is uh, kind of part two of the Morris Development Agreement, as, as we'll get to when we vote on the, uh, get to the bills pending. We've got a, we've got a potential contract with Morris uh, LLC and a couple of subsidiaries. Uh, they're going to build a factory, uh, guarantee employment and uh, uh, construction, and we'll come to that in a minute. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but uh, this is the second part of that deal. This is our cost share with the county. Uh, we agreed to uh, uh, pay for one half the cost of the sewer extension, which is required in the in the, our contract with Morris, and we agreed to split with the county one half of the cost of the rail spur, uh, which is it may or may not happen, but we we're agreeing ahead of time to get that all out in the open. Uh, on the sewer agreement, we will be the uh, uh, lead. We will, it will be a city project. On the rail spur, it will be a, a county project. This file is the same format as all of our previous uh, city county agreements or, or many of our city previous city county agreements. And the money comes from economic development, sales tax. It, the, co the cost of the sewer line is ten to sixteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand tops. It, it's it's a relatively minor cost. The rail spur is more expensive, and I think it's estimated around $100,000. Okay. Any questions, Drew? Bob? W when you say it comes from sales tax, will it come from the sales tax that has been allocated to the sewer fund, or will it come from? Uh, no, I believe it's just economic development sales tax. Okay. I can defer to Matt, though, if I'm wrong. Uh, we, we have a line item in our sales tax that says contingency economic development and kind of a catch-all, if you will, at the end, and uh, that's where we're anticipating. But it probably could come from from uh, the sewer. Typically, uh, from the sewer fund, they don't fund uh, development extensions, okay. uh, and so that's why we would be looking to these funds. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any other questions on uh, 67? Seeing none, we've had third reading. Uh, any other questions? Without questions, no debate. Roll call, please. Branch? Aye. Bray? Aye. Carol? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next, we'll have a first reading of 2013 68. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Section 19401, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule V, Disabled Parking Spaces, of the Code of the City of Jefferson by the addition of a disabled parking space on a portion of the 800 block of Mulberry Street. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as the clerk indicated, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're uh, proposing adding a disabled space in the 800 block of Mulberry Street. The Request went through Traffic and Transportation Commission, and con the contingency was that uh, the requester would have a uh, accessible ramp built in that in that block before this would move forward to the council. So that's been done, and so now the parking space can move forward. Okay. Uh, any questions, of Matt, on uh, 68? Uh, Ralph. Uh, Matt, I can't place where that block is right now. Who or what or how will that benefit that block? Uh, there was a requester, uh, his name was John Cox, I believe, and, and he um, would, he would uh, utilize this space, but of course it would be available to anybody with a disabled parking tag. It's a public street space. 
Uh, but this is kind of a common request to the transportation and traffic and we've kind of the middle ground we found that if people are willing to fund a ramp project for the neighborhood on that block then uh, uh, we're willing to recommend uh, going along with that. Any other questions there? All right, seeing none, we'll have, oh, I'm sorry, Drew, go ahead. Just for sake of clarity, and I know Britt's probably would like to have you, me say this, but the proper term is accessible, and that's why it says accessible parking on the uh, 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 agenda, but it's called disabled parking in the uh, code, and we should probably change that at some point. Is that something you're going to bring forward then through admin, or how would you do that? Yeah, probably admin. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. Any other questions of Drew or staff? Okay, next we'll have uh, first reading of 2013-69. An ordinance amending Chapter 22, Parking, Stopping, and Standing, and Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, of the Code of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, pertaining to snow priority and emergency area routes. Matt. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this topic came through the Public Safety Committee back in May. And basically, it's expanding the definition of snow routes to basically be emergency routes. Any questions there? Matt, is that something you're seeing in other cities, I'm assuming? You know, I wasn't uh, present for the discussion. I know um, maybe somebody, Britt Brit was at the meeting. I could let him uh, answer that if he would like. Uh, honestly, I don't. Is this on? Yes, honestly, I don't know if it's the same in other cities or not, uh, but it, it, we've crafted the ordinance uh, to match what we've been doing, the way we've been functioning, and uh, it gives us the tools. We as, and we as staff believe this gives us the tools to do the job that we've been doing out there on the street. Okay. Any other questions of staff? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on, uh, first reading of 2013-70. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with the Callaway County Collector for billing and collection of taxes. Group. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a continuation of a longstanding agreement with Callaway County Collector to do our billing and collection of real estate and property taxes, just as we do in Cole County. Uh, he accepts the statutory formula for payment, which is a percent. Um, we have the same contract. The Cole County Collector, we pay a bit more because he deals with TIFs and other things, but. This is just a pretty standard inter intergovernmental agreement. Okay. Uh, any questions there? Uh, moving on, we have first reading of 2013-71. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a development agreement with Capital Region Medical Center. Matt. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, this is a development agreement. We've been working with uh, Capital Region staff on this, uh, and I'll just give you kind of in a nutshell the uh, what each party is kind of agreeing to but capital regions agreeing to construct a ba basically approximately 35 million dollar facility at their campus um, and their portion they would provide any right away for any street improvements adjacent to their campus uh, also any sanitary sewer upgrades for them they would provide the uh, on the city side in return for that uh, we would agree to vacate Woodlawn Street about a block of street and any uh, unnamed alleys on some of the area adjacent to that as well. The uh, and then the the uh, traffic portion would we would agree to construct a two-way street. Uh, where currently it's one way on Monroe Street, basically from Stadium to Woodlawn as it exists today. And uh, that that project's actually a part of our Stadium Jefferson interchange improvement project. We found out ahead of time uh, enough ahead that we included that in the scope of a grant project we're doing on that interchange. Okay, any questions for staff on uh, 72? I'm sorry, on 71. Seeing none, we'll move on to first reading of 72, please. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending section 19401, motor vehicles in traffic, schedule O, parking time limit zones, subparagraph E, time zone E of the code of the City of Jefferson, by modifying a portion of East High Street. Matt. Thank you. The, uh, this, this bill pertains to modifying a, the parking uh, time limits on the 500 block High Street from basically, uh, it would go from two hours to four hours. We had a, a resident who actually lives in that block request this and went through the TNT uh, uh, commission or committee. 
and uh, we notified adjacent businesses and, and other property owners in the area, and this was kind of a, uh, a compromise, if you will, to all-day parking, but some of the other uh, owners had commented they would like some time restriction on it, so a four-hour seemed to be acceptable to everyone at that time. Okay, any questions of staff on 72? <coughs> Seeing none, first reading 73, please. An ordinance amending section 19401, motor vehicles and traffic, schedule O, parking time limit zones of the code of the city of Jefferson pertaining to parking on a portion of Madison Street. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, this bill would uh, change, uh, there's two, two spaces marked for 30 minute time limits uh, in front of the uh, governor office building corner of Madison and Capitol. The, uh, those were originally installed when there was some uh, kind of a high turnover uh, business in the, in the uh, lobby of that building. A bank was there. The bank's no longer there, and so we are recommending changing this back to 90 minutes basis to be similar to the rest of downtown. Went through the Transportation and Traffic uh, Committee as well, and they recommended approval. Okay, any questions there? All right, moving on to uh, our bills pending. First is 2013-53, uh, third reading, please. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a grant agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for public transit operating assistance. Matt. Thank you. Uh, this is a grant agreement for our transit division. It's uh, administered through MoDOT, but it's a public transit operating assistance grant. It's a fairly small grant, a little over uh, uh, $4,400, but it does help fund our transit system. We recommend approval. All right. Any uh, questions by the council? Debate? Seeing none, roll call, please. Bray? Aye. Carol? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Branch? Aye. Motion passes. Next, we'll have third reading of 2013-54. An ordinance amending Chapter 7, Boards and Commissions, Article 16, Cultural Arts Commission, Subsection 7-603, Members, Subparagraph D of the Code of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, pertaining to residency requirements of members. Gail. Thank you. Uh, this ordinance would amend the membership of the Cultural Arts Commission. Currently, the code states that um, at least nine of the members shall be residents of the city of Jefferson City, um, with uh, up to two members may reside outside the city limits. At the request of the commission, they have asked that that be changed to at least eight members shall be residents of the city limits, with at, up to three living outside the city limits. Um, it would not have a change in the total membership. The total membership would remain at 11. Okay. Any questions on uh, 54? Yes, sir, Bob. Did I understand you to say that the ordinance currently permits members outside? Uh, Correct. It allows up change. to two. It's just a change in the mix. Uh-huh. Okay. Fine. Okay. Any other questions or comments on 54? Seeing none, roll call, please. Carol. Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Branch? Aye. Bray? Aye. All right, next we'll have third reading at 2013-55. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri vacating and discontinuing the alley located between Madison and Monroe Streets in the 500 block thereof. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is kind of a cleanup ordinance. Basically, it was discovered there's an old platted alley uh, at the Miller Performing Arts uh, Center property. It runs through the, runs through the parking lot. Uh, this ordinance would vacate that, but retain a utility easement for any utilities located there. Any questions there, staff? Debate? Seeing none, roll call, please. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scribner? Aye. Branch? Aye. Bray? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next, we'll have third reading in 2013-56. An ordinance authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a grant agreement between the city of Jefferson and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for construction and construction service related to the airfield lighting electrical vault an airfield lighting control system project at the Jefferson City Memorial Airport. 
Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, the first of, there's three bills here in a row. This is the first one that all pertain to the project. The clerk just mentioned the uh, airfield uh, uh, voltage regulator in, the, in its building. But basically, the first one's a grant agreement with MoDOT funding the uh, construction services and, and their portion of that, of that as well as the construction itself. The grant agreement is for $445,743. And we would recommend approval. Any questions on 56? Debate? Roll call, please. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Branch? Aye. Bray? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Graham? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next one.